Hey, it's Joseph here. It has been a bit since I have unboxed this laptop. And now that I have been acquainted with this one, I want to do the full review. If you have not seen the first video where I check out the exterior and actually inside of the laptop, please do so and I'll leave the link in the description. And I do want to disclose the fact that I have received this laptop from Asus for video coverage purpose like this. Since it was my very first time that I have tried VivoBook, I did a bit of research to understand this product. Overall, I do trust Asus as a good manufacturer who makes a quite innovative products like ZenBook Pro Duo that I have reviewed in my previous video, so please check that video out if you have not already. I also have used their Zephyrus products in the past for professional work. Despite the fact that it was actually meant for gaming purposes, it actually performed really well against my daily tasks. So I wanted to apply all of those thoughts into this specific laptop, the VivoBook. So let's have a look. Whilst the ZenBook from Asus are focused on performance as the flagship lineup for the professionals, VivoBook is more trimmed down but kept to the essentials type of laptop. And for that, the price must reflect that, so more on that later. Overall, I do like Asus's approach to this laptop as I like minimalistic approach and getting the most bang for your buck. Just looking at the exterior of the laptop, it is apparent that things are kept quite simple overall. The color is what Asus calls quiet blue and it is dark gray with hint of blue. I don't know how well it displays on the camera, but there's a bit of design play on the logo over here with a slight bump in the warning pattern that's etched over here. Around the edge, it is nicely chamfered, therefore it doesn't feel sharp as you handle the laptop. Overall, the body is plastic, but it feels solid and it is quite pleasant to handle the device. And I think the plastic was the right approach for handling of this laptop is made quite easy, meaning it is quite light for a 15 inch laptop. The spec says that it is about 1.65 kilograms or 3.64 Pounds. In regards to the dimensions, it is 350 by 235 by 20. Pretty much what you would expect out of 15 inch laptops to be like. And I have gone over all the ports and lifting the bottom plate in my last video. So please refer to that video for those type of information. But I have a few things that I would like to add, especially for those ports related. The USB-C port is not a Thunderbolt as it has the AMD CPU. Therefore, you won't have as fast bandwidth via this specific port or connect to an external GPU. But as you can see on the next of it, it has full-size HDMI port so you can get your display out easily. To the left of the USB-C port, there is a micro SD card reader, which is quite good, but I wish it allowed the card to be inserted a bit more. I usually insert a card and leave it there for an extra storage. However, this one sticks out just a bit too much to leave it and forget about it. Okay, let's go ahead and open the device. One-handed operation, solid points there, no fan the lifting of device with a hinge but it is very smooth and solid feeling as well. The screen isn't really heavy given that the plastic construction but it is quite large because it is 15 inch laptop so it holds quite well to the screen wobbling it will just hold right there however the overall angle of the screen opening is a bit limited so it doesn't go any further than this specific angle I find this angle to be completely adequate if you were to leave the laptop on a desk and type away or on your lap but if you're a type of person who likes to have a bit more angle Angle, then you're gonna be quite limited there. Naturally, let's talk about the screen. No large bezels are around the screen and the space is quite well maintained. This is a screen 16 by 9 ratio at full HD 1920 by 1080 and I do like the resolution choice 
since I always find 4K in 15 inch laptop to be somewhat over stuffing. But make no mistake as the screen is OLED as it is marketed and boasts a great color gamut and accuracy. There is a bit of a flickering that I'm actually seeing on my camera so I just wanted to tell you that it is not apparent in your eyes. It is just an artifact that you see since you are seeing through my camera therefore the frame rates are kind of fighting each other. However it does show 100% DCI-P3 colors in a Pantone value validated colors, meaning that this is capable of showing lots of color very accurately. Perfect for those of you who are doing graphics work or looking to do a color accurate work. Those accurate monitors or laptops often come at a very high cost. So if you're looking to get a good screen laptop, you are looking at one. It does go up to 600 nits of brightness thanks to the OLED screen. So if I were to brighten it up all the way, It'll probably blow out on the camera, although it looks perfectly fine to my naked eye. But since it looks terrible on the camera, I'm just gonna bring it back down. They also claim that it is HDR True Black 600. Darker areas are going to be really dark, and the bright and colorful areas are gonna be showing more vibrant images. And 0.2 millisecond response time makes everything feels snappy, even though the refresh rate is kept at just mere 60 hertz. One thing I do want to note is the fact that the screen is somewhat glossy so it's gonna catch some reflection as you can see over there and the most of OLED screens do suffer from the very same problem so I just want you to keep that in mind if you're a type of person who's prone to a lot of reflections in your studio or working space. Oh and it is not a touch screen for those of you who are wondering. Moving further down the device there is the keyboard. I did mention that the keyboard has a number pad on the right side of the keyboard. Whilst I was using the laptop, I found myself using it quite frequently. So even though the enter key is on a funny place, it is totally usable and will be very useful for those of you who use this number pad very often. And there is a bit of design aesthetics on the enter key, which is basically the continuation of warning stripe that was on the front of the laptop on the logo. The power button doubles as a fingerprint sensor which is subtle but well implemented. I like the overall layout of the keys and there isn't anything too odd that I have found. And I also like the simple implementation of the white illuminated keys and by the way as always I have typed the entire outline of this video on this laptop to Kind of feel out the keys and they do feel really nice. It isn't as tactile as mechanical keys but it really was pleasant and I can really get my typing going really fast. The only gripe that I had about the keyboard was actually related to the touchpad. Whilst typing I rest my right hand on where there is supposed to be a palm rest and it basically pushes the touchpad causing the mouse to click. Mind you there is a good bit of palm rejection so the cursor isn't going to be moving but the physical click as I push down my palm the click is going to be registered and not really get cancelled. And I think this is due to the fact that the touchpad is located in the middle of the laptop and the number pad is on the right side, therefore shifting the entire keys to the left. And don't get me wrong, the touchpad is really smooth and pleasant to use and it is actually quite big. It is one of the largest touchpad that I have seen. But don't get me wrong, the touchpad is really smooth and pleasant to use. I don't know if it is just the fast response time of the screen, but the machine felt so snappy when using the touchpad. Multi-finger gestures are spot on and I really enjoyed using this touchpad. The fact that it is very large, there's plenty of space to move your fingers around. And I guess they could have either not gone as big and shifted the touchpad to the left a little to avoid the palm resting on top of it but if you're type of person who types resting your arm on the desk rather than resting your palm on the palm rest that is not really existing on the touchpad then you should be fine when I was typing on this laptop I just had to adjust my posture a little bit to lift it up like that and 
I got quite comfortable with it. And by the way, the touchpad does feel like glass, at least to my touch. And looking above the screen, there is a webcam that's positioned right here. And as I have mentioned in the previous video, there is a physical webcam cover and I really like this implementation as the switch feels nice and the red dot clearly shows you that it is being covered. So if I push like that, there is red. And if I pull like that, then it just opens and usable right there. Other than weird function or secondary keys on the keyboard, this really just is a foolproof method and it's quite easy. By the way, when it is recording, a white light turns on next to the webcam, letting you know that it is actually recording something. And I'll probably keep this covered most of the time since I don't really use webcam, but I should let you know at least of the recording quality. Okay, here it is. So jumping to the camera of the laptop, I'm also testing out the microphone. Asus claims that it has some noise cancelling capabilities. Let's do some finger snap tests to see how well it isolates my voice over the weird noises that are going around. The webcam itself is 720p, so nothing amazing in terms of the quality. The room is quite dark, so it is probably not pushing out the best quality and I think the video quality is good enough it's gonna get the job done what do you think in regards to the sound that this laptop makes the speakers are done by Herman and Carden supposedly good sounding speakers let's play a song so that you guys could hear out what that sounds like It sounds pretty good. I don't think a specific area is overdone, so it is quite well balanced throughout the low to high, and I can hear the all range of sounds pretty well. And moving on to the heat and fan noise of this laptop, as I have shown in my previous video, if you look at the underside of this laptop under the back cover, then you can see the two fans that are cooling this computer. And I did notice the fans kicking off whenever I do a Windows update or doing benchmarks, but the noise is quite well maintained. It is not really a sharp sound, it is a soft wind noise that's just cooling the laptop down and in general the cooling is quite well maintained the fan is actually not on most of the time right now it is not on unless you're doing something hardware intensive I didn't really hear the fan kicking off so I would say everything is quite well under control and I think this is because of its AMD CPU it is much easier CPU to cool you can further control the fan profile in my Asus which is built-in software for Asus laptop I was testing everything in the standard mode and additionally you can control other things such as the noise cancelling modes and the settings for the OLED screen and the battery modes. And in regards to the battery, it is really good. On my general task testing, where I do a bunch of video plays and small web browsing along with typing up the outline for this specific video, this laptop lasted about 10 and a half hours. And I had the profile set to standard with about 60% of screen brightness. I suppose you can last a bit longer if you were to do battery saving and also turning off a couple of things as well as lowering down down the screen brightness. Obviously, if you're doing 3D modeling or a bit more hardware intensive tests, you can expect it to last lesser than that. Lasting several hours whilst you are away from your desk carrying on a meaningful amount of work seems to be pretty good deal to me. And in regards to charging, I was disappointed that the one and only USB-C port that is on the side of the laptop is not able to charge the laptop. Basically, this laptop does not support power delivery via USB-C port. For a laptop at this caliber, I think it would have been 
Dragon benefited a lot by supporting USB-C charging, but I think that has somewhat to do with the AMD CPUs that this laptop has. They seem to be much less supporting of USB-C charging in general. The charger itself is over here and it is 120 watt charger and it is quite light too. So it is portable, but it is a little larger than some of 100 watt chargers of USB-C port that I am aware of. So yeah, that is something that you're gonna have to carry around if you plan on using this laptop elsewhere from your desk. But since this laptop does have a good amount of battery life, you can just leave it at your desk if you're just planning to be a couple of hours away from your desk and then just move on and come back and basically connect back to the charger. Before we go ahead and go over the benchmarks, let's state the specifications of this laptop. The specific model name of this laptop is M3500Q model, which has AMD Ryzen 7 5800A core processor and NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050. And the screen is 15.6 inches, 1080p OLED screen, 16 gigabytes of memory, and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, and it supports Wi-Fi 6 for faster internet. In regards to the benchmark results, I can say that this laptop has a well-performing CPU with a capable but not a high-performing GPU. Starting with the Enscape, we can see that the GPU is trying very hard but taking more than double of the time that it would have taken on RTX 3060. This is probably due to the small VRAM size of 4 gigabytes and the processing power of the GPU. The trend continues on Lumion and it took about 3 hours on a render that would have taken about 20 minutes on a capable card. When it comes to CPU based renders like V-Ray, it outperformed other laptops and desktops. So you can certainly get some stuff done with its CPU and on V-Ray's GPU CUDA renders, it can match its performance with desktop RTX 2060s. This is probably because the 30 series RTX cards have more CUDA cores than previous gens. And when it comes to the RTX ray tracing task of V-Ray, it is slightly below desktop RTX 2060. Certainly capable of doing things, but not as fast as other higher tier cards. The Revit benchmark courtesy of Mimbox shows that it can outperform i7 9700. I further compare all the test times of the Revit benchmark and both modeling and rendering took less time than the desktop equipped RTX 2060. So for less demanding GPU tasks, it can actually perform very well. And on the Blender CPU render, it does much better than i7s of 9th and 10th gen, but not 11th gen in the desktop. This is just about where I had expected the result results to be. In the new Blender GPU benchmark, it seems to do a bit less than other desktop GPUs that I have compared it to. So how does all of these things stack up towards to its price? Based on my search, this exact spec of the laptop is currently about $1450 US dollars on Amazon. And it appears that this one has Pro after the name Vivo Book to signify that it is the top end specs. So it might be a bit expensive if you're just needing a laptop to do a minimal GPU to handle some graphics work. However, if you actually consider the fact that it has 15 inch OLED with the large color gamut as well as the accuracy it definitely has its place since those type of monitors are quite expensive alone looking around a bit further I've also found the other pros and non pro variants of Vivo book and they are priced quite less than this some were smaller in size as well as ones without the OLED screen overall slightly different specs along with Intel variants of this laptop so I would definitely check those out to find something that meets your budget and the hardware requirements. There's a lot to choose from. So this laptop is definitely a good one if you're needing to rely on the color capabilities of this screen. And since it has dedicated GPU of RTX 3050, whilst it is not really a powerhouse, 
but it is certainly capable of handling 3D modeling and occasional renderings. Oh, and if you're willing to, you can certainly do video edits as well. Overall, I really appreciate its simplistic approach to the non-overly done specifications and also the other available variants seem to be very well priced. So if you have enjoyed this content, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel to continue watching these type of videos. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you next time. Bye.